I'm Sam from Jessup Says. The focus of my channel is to share and educate on how to buy less, buy better. A philosophy I've adopted in recent years that helps me to be selective in what I buy. These things are typically crafted thoughtfully by artisans who love what they create. These things often take a higher initial investment, but if chosen correctly, can be repaired and maintained forever. Hence, buy less, buy better. On another note, all opinions, either here or on my website, jessupsays.com, are my own, unless explicitly disclosed. I'm often quite positive about what I review, and mostly due to the diligence and research in my approach, leading me to make a purchase of exactly what I wanted. A double monk shoe fits in an unusual part of menswear. They're not overtly formal like an Oxford or some loafers, nor are they a casual shoe like a derby or a sneaker, nor a boot even. Though there are some out there if you're looking for a monk style boot. Monk shoes come from humble origins and in recent years they've had their moment in the sun, being a popular choice among menswear enthusiasts. And they were even my choice for my wedding shoe in early 2020. This week we discuss what I think is the easiest to wear monk shoe, a shoe that balances formal and informal quite well, from a brand that has become my favourite in the footwear world, Crockett and Jones and the Lounds in dark brown calf. First up, let's start with an overview of what we know about the shoe. They are made in England, Northampton, and have been made there since 1879. They are from the Crockett & Jones main collection, not their hand grade collection, which is a tier above in terms of both finishing and of course price. They are Goodyear welted, they feature a double monk strap, they are crafted from a full grain calf, have a single leather sole are on the 348 last and I purchased them locally from Australian store Double Monk for 795 Australian dollars which is just under 600 US dollars. Now let's get into the detail and discuss my experience over the last almost two years. Wow, time really flies. Crockett and Jones are one of the largest factories still operating in the shoemaking capital of England and arguably the world, Northampton. The origins of shoemaking or cord waning in Northampton go back as far as the 1600s, a time where humanity was only just leaving the Dark Ages or the Middle Ages. Originally a town known for their tanning of leather, by 1642 Northampton had a whole 13 shoemakers who were hired by the crown to produce 600 pairs of boots and 600 pairs of shoes for the English armies when they marched through Ireland. Over the 200 years till 1841, those 13 shoemakers turned into 1821 shoemakers. And with the Industrial Revolution and the invention of the Goodyear welting machine by Charles Goodyear, they were in a great place to establish industrial scale factories like we know today. As we tend to find in early industry, military endeavours were a large factor in the development and growth of the shoemaking industry in Northampton. Crockett and Jones produced over 600,000 pairs for the First World War and more than a million pairs of shoes and boots for the Second World War. Astounding. Today, managed by the same family that started the business, Mr. Jones or Jonathan Jones, the great grandson of the original Jones, manages operations. Crockett and Jones are constantly recognised as leaders in the industry by people like the Prince of Wales and even James Bond. Crockett and Jones remain at the forefront of quality and design after more than 190 years of production. For me, Crockett and Jones always have what I am looking for when I'm looking for a new shoe or boot. They have fantastically sleek designs in their catalogue, but they also have very rugged designs and boots that might feel more comfortable walking across a field with a sheep or cows on either side. For their main line, their leather and construction are second only to brands that cost double what Crockett and Jones do. And their hand grain line is in line with anything that I've seen from brands like John Lobb and Edward Green. They have fantastic customer service and every person that I've ever spoken to or emailed has provided great advice and service, which is fantastic. While at first you may think that an $800 shoe is expensive, I can assure you that not only will you be impressed, 
but you will want to invest in another pair. Sort of what happens. The exact origins of the monk strap are quite hard to nail down. It's generally accepted that they were developed by a mysterious Shu Guru Alpine monk in the 15th century. The early design worn by these monks was closer to a mix of a sandal and a foot glove, I guess. Now, bear with me, I know that a foot glove isn't actually a thing, but I don't know how else you'd describe these. They don't have a sole like we would consider on a shoe today. Basically, they were a piece of leather wrapped around the foot and had either one or two buckles to help secure them and make them tight, I guess resistant to the snow and to the elements of the day. The 1920s was where first modern examples of monk straps can be seen. Brands like John Lobb being early pioneers with their William model, and even Crockett and Jones being one of the very first to adapt a single style monk strap with their shoe called the Elite in 1924. It's a very pretty shoe. Speaking of single monk strap styles, there are a number of different variations on the monk strap style. There are double buckle, single buckle, wing tip, toe cap, plain front, country, even spectator. It's a style that many choose because it's an extremely comfortable shoe, but it's also versatile in terms of its styling capabilities. Monk straps in general are known to be very comfortable, especially for those with a high instep. It's easy to understand why there is such a proliferation of designs for the style. All designs come in a range of different leathers, from smooth leathers to suede leather to even tumbled leather. The leather on the lounge is described as burnished calf. More specifically, it is an aniline dyed European calfskin. Aniline leather is when the hide is dyed exclusively with soluble dyes. This process is used to create a more natural look and finish to the hide, as the dyes don't penetrate too deeply into the hide, leaving the natural marks and blemishes on the hide and even the pores, which is my personal preference. I want my shoes to look slightly imperfect and to take character on over time or patina. I found the hide to be very easy to maintain and with regular brushing with a horse hide brush. For my wedding, I actually did a full mirror shine on the toe. And although it took me a fair few hours to get right and it was a lot of intense polishing, it worked out beautifully. The hardest part was actually the removal of the polish, which took me even more time to remove all the built up layers of polish that I had accumulated on there and return them back to their original state. The last of the lounge, the 348, is relatively new as far as lasts go, designed in November 2004. Crockett and Jones call it their most important last, as it's really pushed them forward in terms of design in comparison with their contemporaries and their more classic lasts of the time. The design is somewhat more Italian and much more sleek than you may typically see out of a traditional English shoemaker. In 2012, the last became a truly iconic last, being used as the last of choice by Daniel Craig, or James Bond, in both Skyfall and Spectre. Crockett and Jones now offer more than 15 designs on the last, including single Single monks, double monks, monk boots, chucker boots, Chelsea boots, Oxfords, derbies, and even loafers, of course. My experience with the last is that it's very comfortable. It hugs my foot very well, and even without laces, my feet feel very firmly in their place. They're very comfortable for long walks or even long standing sessions. It does have a little bit of room in the toe box, but the heel and ball of the shoe, the part that matters most, are extremely well fitted. And finally, to the price. Double Monk is the leading supplier of high quality footwear in the Southern Hemisphere. They stock Alden, Edward Green, John Lobb, and of course, Crockett and Joan. Their pricing is pretty much in line with buying directly and they offer some exclusive designs which are pretty amazing, like their Chelsea boot that I'm very fond of. As for the price, value is always subjective to you and your wants. But personally, I think it is an extremely fair price to pay for what you receive. As a matter of an example, let's take an unnamed brand that's extremely common here in Australia, which a typical shoe costs around about 250 Australian dollars or around 180 US dollars. So you can get a double monk style for around 30% of the price of the Crockett and Jones shoe. Although there are some very key differences. Firstly, the shoe's leather is described as premium. I've felt the shoes in person and I've seen the leather in person and I can confirm to you that they are not 
premium when considered against Crocker and Jones shoes, for example. They are cheap and they are made cheaply. Over time, the leather creases very easily and looks worn out very quickly, meaning your shoes aren't really going to be, let's say, boardroom ready for a long time. Secondly, the shoe is cement construction. Basically, the top and the bottom of the shoe are glued together. There's no stitching like on a Goodyear welted shoe or a Blake stitch shoe. So not only is there potential for the sole and upper to split, we've all seen this happen in our school days, but also the shoes cannot be repaired or resold. I mean, you can glue them back together, but that's only gonna give you a certain amount of time. So when the shoes are worn out, they're done. You have to throw them in a bin. Finally, made in China. Another topic we discuss quite frequently, and in this instance, I wanted to call attention to it specifically because of the price. The cost of materials in Crockett and Jones shoe is likely to be maybe two or three times higher than in this shoe. But the real cost comes in the construction. Not only are the wages higher in Northampton, but at the same time, the time that it takes to construct a shoe is significantly higher. They're actually having to, you know, sew the shoe together as opposed to just slap, bang, and there's your shoe out the door. So back to the hypothetical situation. Let's say that this unnamed brand shoe lasts two years of consistent wear, which is what I've seen as pretty typical in corporate life. And every two years, you have to spend $250 to buy a new pair. So in just six years, you've paid for a pair of Crockett and Jones. Or you could have a pair of Crockett and Jones and resole them every, based on my wear, four or five years, and wear them for the rest of your life. But you know, that's just my perspective. Buy less, buy better. The Crockett and Jones Lounge is a great shoe. They've served me really well over the last two years and I've enjoyed each time I put them on. They are extremely well made and are a design that's easy to wear whatever your style might be. Thanks very much for watching. Links are in the description as always and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers.